Today we will discuss uh, the concept of drawing. Uh, what is drawing and how we can understand drawing. Drawing is something that we all practice in our everyday life. It is not just practiced by the professionals or the artists, but drawing in general is something that which is connected to our, our lives. Like for example, if you want to show directions to someone, you know, what will we do? We take a paper and try to draw a route, right? So basically drawing is something that everybody uses in their everyday life. Apart from this example that I gave, drawing is something fundamental to our expression, expression by writing. If we write, for example, A or B or any alphabet or A, E, U, whatever that we write, we kind of inscribe it on the paper, we inscribe it on a surface, right? So that itself involves certain dimensions of drawing, that is a practice, a kind of a drawing that we do every day, right? So today we will look at some practices of drawing apart from the everyday practices of drawing. What are the ways drawing is used in different design practices, different, different draftmanly practices and artistic practice. So to begin with, let us give a basic definition to drawing. Drawing may be defined as the linear realization of visual objects concepts, emotions and fantasies including symbols and even abstract forms. To extend this definition, we can go a little ahead and say that drawing is a graphic art which is characterized by an emphasis on form or shape rather than mass and color as in painting. So drawing is something that is used to translate a three-dimensional form into a two-dimensional surface, right? Drawing is a medium through which we represent the reality, the real world into an image, into a visual world, right? As well as drawing is a medium through which we represent our fantastic imagination on the paper, right? Or on a surface. So drawing works in two ways. One is to represent nature or the real world into something like a painting or a graphic art or any kind of a two-dimensional representation as well as drawing is used to give form, give image, give shape to our imagination. So drawing gives shape as well as drawing abstracts the real world into a two-dimensional world. So we will try to kind of see and uh, understand how drawing plays different role, different roles as well as how drawing is used for different purposes, right? So what are the uses of drawing? Drawing is fundamentally used for visual communication, right? So like sound, words when we speak are used for verbal communication, drawing is used for visual communication. It is a fundamental element of visual communication, right? So there can be two kind of functions we can have, we can divide drawing into two, two types. One is functional where drawing is used for functional purposes, another is artistic purpose, right? Non-functional, artistic or expressive purpose, right? Where it might serve to express, to give form, to give shape, to give an image to your internal expression, to your emotional expression. So we can basically divide like uh, a fundamental division can be a functional as well as non-functional or artistic uh, function of drawing, right? So let us first look at the functional category, functional type of drawing. What are the functional 
functions of drawing right one is mechanical or technical drawings another is scientific botanical drawings drawings in botany textbooks or zoological drawings right so drawings of science another is architectural drawings so we have drawings of architectural plans architectural elevations and and different levels of architectural planning uh, uh, we can see where drawing is used right and another is cartographic usage of drawing for example making maps you know so making maps also involves drawing so we have different ways different kinds where drawing and drawing by using line is practiced another is medical purposes where you know doctors in their learning about medicines about anatomy about different body parts they use drawings right apart from that you have design so designers use drawing designing different things designing chairs designing uh, cars designing uh, furniture designing uh, fashion designing you know different kinds of designing practices we have drawing as a very important tool to express their imagination to express their uh, functional imagination another uh, usage is is illustrations and we all uh, know how illustrations are very helpful in our everyday usages like we have illustrations for books we have children's illustrations for stories we have illustrations in magazines so different practices of illustrations we have seen we can see drawing plays a very important role now we'll see some examples of the functional other category of drawing what is the other type other type of drawing in that category we have visual art visual art is the practice where it doesn't serve a purpose right it is for visual pleasure it is for visual expression it is like a painting a drawing a sculpture so these are all practices that are done under visual art nowadays we have computer art right so we have images created on computer we have drawing done on computer right so this visual art is something that is that we get aesthetic pleasure it is not used for any purpose but it is for aesthetic expressive pleasure right so we'll now look at the functional categories of drawing like we have enumerated now we'll see some of the images what are the functional uh, types that we have enumerated for example technical drawing what do you see in technical drawing you now drawings of different parts of machines uh, drawings it, these are called diagrams basically because you have different mechanical drawings where the diagrams are done with different instruments and these are calculated drawings these are not expressive but these are calculated and they have a purpose they are done for designers to understand the functions of a particular machine or how to build a machine what are the parts what are the constituent parts how are, how are we going to arrange them and the drawing helps the uh, person who is assembling the parts or person who is making the parts you know so the drawing or the diagram helps that person to assemble them in a particular manner Assem assemble them in stage by stage so here drawing serves the purpose of guiding uh, the person guiding the person who is assembling a ma machine to guide assemble them in a proper stages in in proper manner right so drawing here has a purposeful dimension and another example is this uh, botanical drawings and botany and if you uh, if you look at botany textbooks botany books where you have the drawings of foliage what we call flowers plants leaves and different uh, foliage different plants 
are made and they are they are drawn very finely with very clear detail right so each flower each leaf is different from the other so in the botanical drawings what we see is this very skillful draftsmanship where uh, artists are the draftsman the person who practices this kind of a drawing this kind of a very skilled very fine drawing is called as draftsman so this the practice can be termed as draftsmanship so we can see a very skillful very impressive draftsmanship used in these drawings and you can see these examples on the screen that you have so for example this where you have four different kinds of uh, kinds of plants along with flowers and you can see each of them are very clearly differentiated by the way they are drawn you know so and the names are written down there right at the bottom of each plant so this is to basically differentiate it has a purpose to show different species of plants uh, in the context of animals we have different species of animals and we can see this very clearly in apart from the botany books or the or the zoological books we have them very clearly uh, used in the children's books where you know different plants and different animals are represented so here drawing is serving the purpose of differentiating purpose of representing different species it has a purpose of knowledge purpose of information another category of functional drawing is science illustrations and we have seen from our childhood in the science books science textbooks how illustrations are used to make us understand different phenomena of science so this is an example where you know different objects of balance of weighing are shown and the lines that are used here are more or less straight and has a geometric character unlike the botany lines another is architectural drawing so architectures architects uh, use different ways of drawing they have a different method of drawing using different mechanisms drafters and different tools so they create drawings first to construct the architecture later so for them to construct a drawing first before constructing a, an actual building is very important so drawing is the is the ground on which they actually imagine and plan their entire architecture and from there they sort of construct from there they sort of translate the drawing into the architectural form so for architects drawing is a very important important practice and they do practice for a long time and they have two major ways major categories of drawing one is the uh, plan the ground plan another is the elevation elevation uh, uh, drawing right so they use largely mathematical and geometric uh, aspects mathematical and geometric techniques of creating an architectural design and architectural drawing so this is where we can see the line that is used is created by using scales and drafters so which is why the line has a neutral quality like in the science uh, drawings like in the earlier medical drawings we have also in the context of architectural drawings line has a neutral non expressive quality right and we look at what is expressive quality of the line little later so if when we are looking at these functional practices of drawing you can remember that the line over here is having a character of neutrality or the non expressive condition of 
line. And this is another example of architectural drawing. It is a transaction of a particular building. This is called Pantheon, which is in Rome, built during Roman times. This is a transaction, uh, a vertical transaction of the Pantheon. And you can see here, the drawing is not just of the architectural structure, but there are some uh, notations, you know, by using different alphabets so that it shows measurements. So drawing here on the paper is a sort of a cryptic, a sort of a miniature version on two-dimensional surface of the architecture that we have on the ground in its three-dimensional form. So drawing, as we have seen in the in few slides, that drawing is a sort of an abstraction of the three-dimensional world. So drawing plays this important role, uh, quality of abstraction. So cartography is another practice where drawings, uh, drawing is used. Here also, the cartographers, the person who makes maps is called cartographer and the practice is cartography where maps are created and you see this world map you know two two sides of the world and they have a clear uh, practice of calculation they use different kind of tools okay so but at the same time the quality of drawing the the importance of drawing we can see here uh, very well this is another example of cartography where you see different kinds of lines here uh, are used here the thin lines thick lines but again the line has a character here the character is <coughs> functional the character is neutral and non expressive another is uh, medical drawings and doctors practice doctors know the organs of uh, the human anatomy by using these medical drawings and by reading these drawings they know what are the shapes and what are the uh, details of each and every organ within the human body. This is another example. Here also drawing is serving the purpose of reading not expression but you know, drawing is serving the purpose of information and this is also called as diagrams and I'm sure you remember from our childhood we have seen many diagrams in the science textbooks and they are called diagrams. So, but the practice is drawing though, the, though it is called diagram but the tools, basic, basic tools that are used here is part of the larger practice of drawing. Another practice is design and designers, I am sure you know, designers use their uh, drawing skills to create, you know, not from the nature but from their imagination, from their creative imagination. Uh, they try to create different designs on paper and this is one of the examples where a car, a very uh, a uh, fantastic looking car or uh, maybe a sports car is, is, is shown here in this design. Another is this where a bottle is, is shown, right? Here also you can see how the line is used for designing the bottle. Again here the line is not showing any expressive quality but the line is used for the purpose of creating an imaginative design on the paper and this is an example of fashion designing and the purpose of drawing functions of drawing is illustrations this is one of the examples of illustration illustrations showing how a carver a wood carver is uh, how a wood carver works in his workshop right so this has a purpose of uh, uh, rather documentation Right? Like if you take a photograph, photograph is one kind of a documentation and drawing serves a purpose of documentation like this where you can show a, a person or you can show someone 
or you can uh, show a building or anything and you can illustrate it is again illustrating what you see you know so this is an example of illustration and i'm sure you might have come across such illustrations in magazines in storybooks in in uh, newspapers and different books this is an example of illustration another illustration is this this is from jungle book where you know a snake and a mongoose are in dialogue and it's a very colorful illustration and this illustration is accompanied by a, by the story you know it accompanies the story where when we read the story and when we look at this uh, uh, illustration we know that you know the story is talking about or the episode that we are reading is talking about uh, the a dialogue between these two organisms that are happening in this particular environment of forest. So the illustration plays uh, the role of giving a visual correlative. It gives the visual uh, uh, to the imagination uh, when we read, we imagine. So to that imagination, illustration gives a sort of a visual uh, world to us in front of us. So now we'll move to the uh, context of visual art. How can we see drawing in the context of visual art? And what are the ways drawing can be done in the context of visual art? Visual art which is not a functional art but which is used or which is done and which is seen uh, for visual pleasure, for aesthetic pleasure, you know, for an emotional fulfillment by looking at an image. So let us move. So what are the elements and principles of drawing? So till now we have seen the functional category, uh, categories of drawing and how different ways drawing is, was used in the context of the functional category. Now in the context of visual art category, drawing has different character, right? Different elements are there which needs to be considered which needs to be understood when we look at drawing in the context of visual art, right? So there are elements of drawing and there are principles of drawing. Drawing here should have an expression. It should have an expressive quality. Unlike the medical drawings, unlike the technical drawings where the drawing was neutral, the drawing was not giving you any expression but information. Here in the context of visual art, we need or we expect expression. The drawing expresses something, right? So expression is an important principle of drawing in the context of visual art and balance. So when you draw or when you see a drawing on paper, the drawing should have a sense of balance, okay? So drawing, uh, balance can be of various kinds that the artist can decide. So, but basically balance is something that one needs to have uh, in drawing when one creates as well as one sees. So elements of drawing, there are some four basic elements of drawing and we can extend, but today for now, we'll stick to four elements of drawing. That is dots, you know, dot, and then line, texture, and value, right? So we'll see these elements and these principles, how they are reflecting in our examples when we look now. So line, when we try to understand line, line has different characters. There are different characters of lines. You have horizontal lines, straight line, vertical lines, and you have zigzag lines, and you can see it on the slide on the screen in the slide, zigzag lines, carved lines, curly lines, spiral, you have thick lines and thin lines and lines made out of different kinds of uh, materials, pencil line, pencil, pen line, brush line, charcoal line and you can use various other materials, pastel, various other mediums uh, to create lines. So lines create different shapes like square, triangle, circle, or ellipse, or 
any other shape that you want to create, right? Angular lines. And lines are also used for hatching, right? And irregular lines. So all these kinds of lines are used in the drawing, in the drawings that are done by the artists in the context of visual art. And this variety of lines are not generally used in the context of functional drawings that we have seen just above. So variety of lines are used in the context of visual art and we'll see how that happens. For example, this portrait, this particular drawing of uh, the face of a young boy or a girl, a child, let us say. So this is done by brush and here you can see various kinds of lines, right? You have carved lines, you have parallel lines but straight parallel lines, you have carved lines for curly carved lines for hair, you have lines that are forming cheeks that are going on to the nose and then going down on, on the other side. So lines that are looking like waves, you have small lines for the nose, right? And if you look at the eye and the eyeballs, you have circular lines, right? So the entire face is created by using different kinds of lines, just by juxtaposing different kinds of lines and crisscrossing different kinds of lines, which is called hatching, right? So the body, the volume, you know, we can see a sense of roundness, a sense of expression in the eyes. All these things are created by using just lines and different kinds of lines. And you can see on the cheek, you have bold, black, dark lines, and but on the, on the, uh, the other, part of the cheek right down the eye, you can see the lines are used faintly, right? So the artist is creating the depth, what we call depth by using lines, you know, the three dimensionality, the sense of uh, volume is created by using different intensity of line. So the darker line, the medium dark line and the lighter line, right? So line has this range of possibilities where you can create, you know, uh, darkness and light, uh, lightness, you can create light and shade, you can create volume by just manipulating and juxtaposing lines. So this is an example of the ways one can use line and create a very expressive drawing. And this is uh, very expressive, right? The very, uh, the, the child, as you can see, look at the eyes, and there is a sort of a childish, very playful, curious expression on the face of the child. So this we cannot see, for example, in the medical drawings. This is the difference that we have between the functional drawing practices and the non-functional expressive visual art drawing practices. And yeah, so when we, look at visual art and the kinds of materials that are used because each material has its own qualities. A brush line would have a different quality than a pencil line and a brush line would have a different expression than a pencil line. Similarly, a charcoal line have, has a different um, quality and different expression that it creates. So in the history of art, in the practices of art in history and now, we have ver variety of materials used by the artists. For example, pencils, the graphite pencils, uh, something called metal styli. Metal styli is no more in use, but during the Renaissance times, metal styli was extensively used. It's a very common uh, uh, material. Uh, chalks, like for example, chalk is nothing but the chalk piece that we have, which is white and similar material you get in uh, different colors like dry pastels. So chalks and dry pastels and pens like ball pen or crocodile pen or fountain pen or different kinds of pens or traditional pens and earlier artists used to make their own pens. For example, I give you one example, Kalamkari artists 
they make their own pens to create their drawings, right? So traditional pens and the modern pens, pencils of different kinds, brushes and uh, felt pens. Felt pen is nothing but that we get in uh, uh, shops, the, the sketch pens, right? Felt pens or sketch pens. So you have other variety of uh, 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 materials used by artists. Not only these, but there are various other materials that artists use to create their drawings and for their own expressive purpose, right? So each artist would have his or her own favorite material. For example, somebody would like charcoal, somebody would like pen, somebody would like pencil. So somebody would only draw in brush. So each artist is comfortable with one particular kind of material or tool. This is a very famous artist called Rembrandt coming from Baroque, uh, a Dutch artist, 17th century artist. So this is uh, done by pencil, right? And you can see what you see here. It is an elephant, but look at the elephant. Elephant is very lively, you know, it is it is moving, there is a lot of life in the elephant. Uh, it is very animated, right? And the entire quality of movement and animation and the liveliness of um, the elephant is created by using just pencil lines. And you can see different kinds of lines uh, used by the artist. Uh, the lines that are lighter, the darker lines, and lines in different directions, not the straight lines, but you know, lines of different intensities, lines uh, used in different directions and lines that are animated. So that is more important here where line itself has carry, it's itself is carrying certain sense of movement, certain sense of animation. And these qualities are the qualities of expression, right? So the elephant is expressing something that which is the liveliness as well as the quality of life, you know. So which we don't get to see in the functional side of drawing, whether it is design or mechanical drawings, architectural drawings or maps or whatever you take. But visual art has this potential, this quality of expression and artists have really explored that possibility using these tools of drawing and this is one of the examples and drawing is also used to do to draw many things animals birds trees landscapes houses objects human beings whatever whatever the artists like to draw so this is one example this is another example by the same artist Rembrandt but this is a different medium right unlike the liveliness of the elephant, here the quality of ferocity is emphasized. If you look at the lion here, which is done in brush and ink on paper, right? So, which is a different material than pencil. Here he is using uh, brush in a different manner, you know, the rough lines, the smooth lines and different kinds of lines. And look at the face of the lion, it looks scary, it looks ferocious, it is charged and it is, it can anytime jump, right? So the artist has captured the, not only shape and the anatomy of the animal, but he has captured the expression, the, the character of the animal by using different kinds of lines, by using different textures of line, uh, 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 by using different textures using the lines. Right? So you have two examples here, one is very lively, the elephant is not so ferocious like the lion as we understand it generally, uh, elephant also gets ferocious when it gets ferocious, but elephant looks different from the lion here. So the two qualities or characters of two different animals are captured by using, by the way the lines are used, you know. So here drawing has a possibility to express the character of what you are drawing. Whether you are drawing lion, elephant, you are capturing the character. And in capturing the character, different kinds of lines are used and different ways, you know, you move your tool to capture that character. 
that is what is the expressive quality of the drawing in the context of visual art. And apart from uh, animals, you have something like this, which is a landscape. And again, he is using ink and paper. Here, you, when you look at it, you get a pleasant feeling, right? You have a sense of light that is coming from the left side that is falling on the tree. And there is a mild breeze where the tree is falling towards the right onto the uh, cottage that you have over there, right? And the liveliness, you know, when you look at the tree, the tree gives you a feeling of movement and liveliness, a, a sense of pleasant feeling. That is contrasted with the static, heavy character of the cottage that is right in the center, right? So you have different uh, tones created, right? You have different uh, depths that are created, right? So all this is created by using just ink on paper, right? So artists here knows how to capture this environment, the feel of the environment, the feel of the light and the breeze, you know, of the rural uh, scene into his paper, right? So here the expression of that particular mood of let us say either afternoon or uh, late afternoon or late morning, you can see here that is captured. So it is not just a matter of showing what you are seeing, but it is capturing that experience uh, through drawing and drawing has that quality. This is another landscape by an artist, a 19th century British artist called John Constable, he's a very popular artist a very important landscape artist. He painted landscapes extensively in the 19th century when Brit Britain was getting industrialized. So landscape becomes very uh, important, a topic, a genre. So landscape is a genre like still life, portrait and other kinds of practices. Genre is something that we use for different categories like in the context of literature, you know, comedy is a genre. Uh, uh, tragedy is another genre uh, and uh, different kinds of genres are there like that. Uh, you have uh, uh, drama is another genre. So in a similar manner, in the, in the context of visual art, you have different genres uh, where landscape is one of the genres and Constable is known for uh, landscape painting. So even here you see he's capturing the countryside is capturing the rural uh, uh, location that he traveled through, he went to and then spent time in the rural location and capturing that. So capturing the mood, capturing the light, capturing the uh, character of the rural forest, will, uh, not forest but village, you know, the rural ambience because, you know, Britain was getting industrialized, it was almost you know, uh, height of industrialization. Uh, so people were trying to go, go into the villages, go into the nature. So nature became a very important sort of a preoccupation during the heights of industrialization. So nature became very important. So this is an example of that where he's capturing the rustic rural uh, quality of uh, this particular scene. So Constable uh, extensively did landscapes, as I said, this is one of the examples of his sketchbook. Uh, so this is, he, he did this in pastel, like we know, oil pastels, right? So you have a different character here, he is using hatched lines and uh, different intensities of grey that you see here. So different tones are created by using pastels. This is uh, an, an interesting combination of two, two different materials. Again, a sort of a rural scene where uh, maybe a fisherman is fishing and you have a tree over there. What he did is he sort of uh, used a ink wash, a brown ink wash, and then over the ink wash, he used pastel, oil pastel, right? or crayon as we call it. 
So he is using diff two. He is creating two tones, or he is creating different tones by using two different mediums. Because oil pastel can actually give you a very dark tone, which ink might not give always. So he is using these two materials and creating a different intensity, different variation of tones. This is uh, the same artist Rembrandt. Uh, so here you see he is using uh, brush and ink and creating uh, faces, right? He's studying it's it's head study as we call it. And look at the way he is using lines and how he is using the mass of ink to create the light and shade on the left side uh, uh, left side figure by using. A particular manner, he is using ink in a particular manner to create light and shade, right? So, ink gives you uh, a particular potential, particular possibilities to create effects. And Rembrandt is a fantastic artist who used ink and brush and created these uh, very sensitive effects in his drawing. And his lines have a sort of an animated quality as you can see the lines have a swiftness in the other uh, studies the three other studies of heads here this is another famous artist and uh, i'm sure you might have heard this name michelangelo an italian artist michelangelo used conte what is called conte or what we can now see as dry pastel now we get it as dry pastel or conte he used Conte extensively and created these very detailed and mus detailed figures of musculature, right? So he used this material to study, right? He studied particularly the male figure and you can see how detailed musculature study is brought out by using just one single material called Conte, right? So we have seen a range of images within the context of visual art and different ways of doing drawing and different expressions created within the drawing, different expressions of human figure, uh, different expressions of animals and different expressions and different moods of environment. This is another drawing by uh, Michelangelo, the figure study. So he did several studies and after that he used these studies for his larger paintings and here you can see a figure from the back as if the figure is taking something from the top and you can see here the detailed muscles that he is representing in the drawing and you can see we have seen three to four artists, three artists and each artist has a particular temperament, each, each artist has his own temperament. Constable uh, is using ink in a different manner, Rembrandt is using ink pencil in a different manner to create different expressive qualities. Michelangelo is more emphasizing his interest on figure and the details of the figure. It is not the expression of the face but the expression of the muscles. For that, Conte uh, came as a very promising material for Michelangelo. So each artist, as I was mentioning earlier, would choose his or her own material and explore that material to, to create the uh, expressive qualities of the drawing. This is another artist called David Hockney. He's a very, uh, he's an artist who is still alive. He's a British artist. And here, if you look at the drawing, here the drawing uh, is dominant by the linear line. The line, it's only one single line and it is done by pen, right? Pen and ink. So here the entire figure, the figure that is sleeping in bed and look at the bed sheet or look at the uh, pillow, look at the hair and the expression of the face where the face is immersed in deep sleep, right? So Hockney is not using many lines, Hockney is not using uh, hatching or he's not using the mass, you know, like Michelangelo, like the, uh, let's say, Constable or, or Rembrandt, he is not using uh, that kind of a line that other artists used. He used just the linear line, just the simple free-flowing uh, 
pen line, right? So you can see a quality of flow in the line, right? Line flows very easily and if you have drawn with the pen, pen has a quality of flowing, you know? This is another example, it's a portrait. And here also you can see he is using only just the single line and creating the entire drawing, right? and emphasizing using certain dark areas on the face and emphasizing the area of the face. When you look at this slide, your eye goes very directly onto the face, right? So the emphasis is on the face, like in the earlier drawing, the emphasis is on the face, but the entire drawing is created by just using line. This is another drawing by David Hockney, but here, 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 he is using charcoal and landscape. So here he is using a different medium, which is charcoal, not pen, and different genre. It is not a figure drawing, but it is a landscape. So he is creating a different mood, different temperament, and different character of expression here, unlike the other drawings that you see of him. This is another famous artist, you might have heard his name, called Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh. And he has used particularly, apart from brush and ink uh, and uh, pen and ink, he has done fantastic charcoal drawings and chalk drawings. And this is an example of charcoal drawing. And you look at the dark, deep and very expressive lines that he is using to draw the figure. And the figure, it is called worn out. The figure is a coal mine worker and you can see the dark lines, the, uh, the man who is tired at the end of the work. So that quality, that expression is captured in the, in the drawing. This is uh, the same artist, uh, peasant woman lifting potatoes and he is using black chalk here. And you can see the same expression of work, labor and you know, the hard work he is created by using the black chalk. So a still life, still life is another genre that we have and this is created by using charcoal. Still life is nothing but you have different objects placed on the table or at the window or anywhere and you try to draw them and you can draw them by using different materials. So like landscape, portraiture and figure drawing, you have still life uh, as an important genre in visual art. Still life becomes prominent during the time of Baroque, which is 16th, 17th century, and extensive still lives, very beautiful still lives and detailed still lives are produced, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, Dutch, as well as, you know, uh, and, and other cities. This is created by charcoal and you can see in this particular still life, you have two capsicums and an onion and you have a vessel over there. You see the qualities, the steel, the capsicum surface and the onion surface have been captured very well and the light is coming from the left, left side of the frame and how the light is, you know, litting up this space and litting up these objects and how the, by using charcoal, the artist has captured three different characters of the objects, three different objects. So still life, you know, is something that where you can capture the qualities and the characters of the objects that you paint and how the light falls on it or you draw how the light falls on it. This is uh, another example where the artist is using pen and ink. So here he is using just the linear line of the pen. Unlike charcoal where you can smudge and, you know, manipulate the material or the medium, here you have only the single line. So by using different lines, by using many lines and using lines in different directions and by using uh, hatching, here again the light and shade and the volume and the weight of the objects are created, right? And the depth and the background, the darkness of the background. And you can see how the light is falling from the top and the shadows of the objects. But here it is a medium which is different from charcoal, it, it is pen and ink. This is uh, another still life uh, which is done in pencil, right? So 
the other two mediums we have seen this is the last medium that we are seeing now which is pencil on paper and you look at three objects three different material one is steel one is one looks like a plastic the tall tumbler and one is the transparent glass cup right so you see the artist how the artist has captured three different uh, characters the mm -hmm. material characters of different uh, three different materials the glass the plastic tumbler and the metal cup right so here using pencil how the artist needs to understand how you can use pencil to bring out these three different characters of three different objects so uh, we have seen drawing how drawing is used functional as well as non-functional which is visual art and we have tried to pay attention and emphasize on visual art uh, and how drawing has this quality of expression and how expression is created and carried out in the in the drawing by using different materials and mediums.